Hello, SGD, and I want to tackle one of the uh, most repeated myths in regards to these ancient stone vases from Egypt, and especially in regards to the lost high technology and the latest fad of these precision vases. But one of the comments I got in the past, I made some samples, and then it would be, we'll make 40,000 of them, uh, but there were 40,000 you know, granite or diorite vases found beneath the step um, pyramid in the pyramid of Djoser uh, or the step pyramid in Saqqara. Uh, but they're vases and they're granite or diorite. Um, now, Lauer is often quoted, but let's look. So Jean-Philippe Lauer, very important fellow, especially in regards to um, excavating and putting these vases back together again. So. Really, the logic goes like this: If forty thousand of these pieces were made from incredibly hard stone, um, where found it is evidence of ancient lost high technology, since it could not have been done with hand tools. Therefore, and because of their precision, uh, therefore, lost ancient high technology, Atlantis, so forth. Well, let's. I'll put these links in the description. Um, An hours do service the antiques to Egypt. Um, now, there are French but also English translations in there. We go to the stone vessels from the Step Pyramid by Quibble and look at the important things he has to say here. So, uh, fill the stone vessels, not vases, here's the important thing, vessels, not vases, filled the galleries beneath the Step Pyramid, but the stacks, large stacks, alabaster fragments, um, might be able to assemble few vases from this discouraging mass. The result was surprisingly good, though few vases were complete. More than a hundred were so far brought together that can that they can be made into a very presentable museum pieces. So they had to put them back together. But we're looking at a hundred museum pieces, not forty thousand, a hundred. Now, what else does he say? So uninscribed dishes, if broken into a few pieces only, or of rare form or a special ornamental stone are also mended up with the great mass uninscribed and of common forms to restore which would take an unconscionable time are left in their boxes and stashed in the shelves in a magazine there were so many of them that even now there's pieces laying around and they consider it's not some it's i've seen it said that this is a cover-up um at the step yeah at the step pyramid uncharted x uh yosef i um yosef Iowan, have uh, bought this, but some 15,000 must already await reconstruction. Here's the important part. The greater number by far are shallow bowls and dishes and are of alabaster. Among them, some are of schist, of a red and white conglomerate, even of harder stones, but these last are curiously rare in comparison with those found in the tomb, tomb chambers and galleries leading to them. It would appear the diorite, that diorite was generally reserved for tombs in this pantry or wherever it was, nothing very expensive was stored. Okay, so important. The great number by far are shallow bowls and dishes and are of alabaster. The other harder stones are very rare and they were you know, not in this great hoard of 40,000. They were very rare and in tombs. Now, in that same paper, they also have some pictures of, and those, of, and we'll be coming back to these just to, so. Here is uh, one of the pictures of it. This is what, the, if there wasn't 40,000 vases, there were stacks and stacks of alabaster objects. I've done the, um, some examples by, uh, I did in, in a harder stone, which is marble, and I'd basically be knocking out two a day, and that's on my own. In a workshop situation, these would be absolutely pumped out with hand drills and copper tools, and so even the, the mass of 40,000 of them, if there were only 10 workshops spread across the length and breadth of Egypt, they would be pumped out in no time at all, uh, depending on the site. So if it was just one person and 10 individuals, that's... 20 a day minimum 10 a day for the for the deeper ones so this you know the, the, the masses are not really important um here's other examples of where the, you know they started piecing the other ones back together the workmen were getting all the pieces and here you can see they're all mainly uh like the alabaster 
They're very simple designs. Um, they're very thick as well, so it's not this super delicate, you know, super precise work. So that's the reality of the 40,000. Then we have this picture, which shows the, the peak collection of those, the, the, the masterpieces of those. And these are now can be seen in the British Museum, Cairo Museum, and a few other places around the world. Here are the rare examples of the 40,000. And even amongst the top pieces, a lot of it's alabaster. Not diorite, not granite, these are quite rare. And uh, the you know, documentation, you know, and the in, in important part, these have provenance. They were brought out of the pyramid. They weren't, uh, there was a huge industry in forgeries. They're still making fake uh, vases now, but they're not, you know, they're as tourist pieces, not meant to, to make people believe that they're actually uh, the real thing, ancient style. Now, in that same paper, now, so again, now I won't go into it, I'll, I'll come back to this later because there's more uh, in regards to this, but in this section they describe about the, the partially finished ones, the drill holes and the other, like again, link will be in the description if you're curious to go straight there now. They were drilling them, cylindrical drills, there was even a copper dagger found amongst the uh, hoard there, but now we come to Jean-Philippe Lauer, again, pardon the pronunciation, La Pir this one is purely in French, so uh, there would be some translation for me to go um, into this, I couldn't find an English version, but there's enough from the images and what I can glean from the French, but La Pyramide, uh, uh, de Grez, 30 compliments, free compliments, but uh, again, I'm butchering the French, but sorry. Now, in that chapter, what we have is drawings by Lauer showing the shape but also the thickness of these. Now I did a video a couple years ago in regards to these. The museum pieces in Cairo and London and other places, you can look at these things just by eyeballing them and you can see the imprecision of those. But I'll come back to that, uh, I'll, I'll do an update of those. But now from those, you know, for instance, this dish, this uh, which pre presentation bowl, um, fruit platter, I don't know what you call it, that's the uh, picture of it there, and again a lot of you know broken pieces and the, the, the basalt and the granite tended to be, and we'll see, quite thick, so it was quite strong, it was able to withstand, firstly it was put in, you know, because they were more expensive and rare, they were put in special places as where the 40,000 were you know, alabaster shallow bowls and dishes, and again you could just pump these out. Uh, we have this page, and you can just take note, you know, there's these rather simple shapes, and they're mostly very, very thick, the, the walls of those. So uh, now I also have this image, you know, so we see this dish, and this has like a bit of a double feet, you know, a sort of dish within a dish, and a raised lip. And so we also have this dish which is rather unique amongst the collection and it's very ornate uh, the decorations on top and this other well I'm not going to just because I couldn't quite get the French in there but we can zoom in and see what these uh, are like and again you get an idea of how detailed the decorations is and we also have the famous five lobed one again very rare very 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 rare piece amongst the collection Amongst the fa so again putting the, the pieces that were uh, ornate or special, they went to you know a bit of an effort to try and put them back together. So we have this piece here, and then we see the image of how it looked when it was put back together. And there's just a close up, and it's very reminiscent of this uh, other alabaster piece as well. Actually, it could be the same one that's been put back together. Actually, come now, I'm not too sure, but I'll. I'll look further into that so we do see that discoloration is that yeah okay we'll come back to that in future episodes um, now some of these pieces now if you're familiar with these you might recognize because they're also in the Saqqara Museum as well there's a, um, I don't know, a dozen or so really nice pieces of, of harder stone we have this alabaster large vase with a rope um, decorations on the outside and there you can see it there 
I think that's actually still in the Saqqara Museum. Again, I'll bring it up. Again, very thick uh, pieces is the general rule. Again, these bowls and vases get uh, very thick. Uh, now, the va if you want to call it a vase type, even there's a, the, the short vase, stumpy one, and then the long, tall one, but again, they tend to be thick there. The, the rare example of these hard stone vases is uh, the thinner ones, but even, again, thick and chunky, um, and we'll go into it, and they're not symmetrical. They're, you don't need a fancy scanner. To, you can just, like, see from, you know, that they're just not, but we'll come back, so again, to use this bowl, which is pretty unique, because it has this... Uh, opening for pouring in there and uh, now this one I've seen it I'm pretty sure it's in uh, but we'll come back to uh, future episodes now this is in a there's a cup of diorite which is translucid and that's figure 62b which is this one so it's again the vases are not it's presented that way and they show and they'll show a particular vase that's got a broken corner and go oh look how thin it is but we'll, we'll examine it but that thin point is at the widest part of of the vase and then it quickly broadens out and becomes quite thick so it's not even consistent thickness going through but anyway we'll come back to that but that's an example of a translucent one now i want to come to this is an old photo of a collection at the british museum of these special rare ones and item 4716 it's an important one now we have a newer photo and most of those in this older photo they can be seen here in this newer high-res photo from the british museum there's item 4716 even got the chip as described by Petri. This is used one of the special examples. Um, it's presented as a vase that, you know, it's no stouter than a thin card, but this is actually a bowl and it's open. It's easy to get in and to do the polishing and grinding out. And we'll go, I'll revisit as well because Petri also points out that it's a Greek era one, which is the most, the best bowl, I mean, sorry, vase, you know, where it's been hollowed out really thin but the point is 40,000 vases of granite and diorite and they well they're not now for instance this is one with provenance it's in the British Museum and you can just by eyeballing you can see that it's and I've got a better I'll get better angles of that but that's one of those where it's not even necessary to do precision scanning because it's just not beautiful piece uh, curved bottom balances really well awesome piece of, of manufacturing but in, is it precise machined absolutely not we'll come we'll do it further but by far the greater number by far are shallow bowls and dishes and of alabaster among them are some some of schist conglomerate or harder stones but these are curiously rare in comparison with those found in the chambers get linux so the diorite was generally reserved for tombs and so that's what the 40,000 were you know they present the rare exceptions as a rule but that's just not the case and you see these no this is why cairo museum british museum and these others you know, keep these on display because they are the, the rare exceptions to the rule um as where there are a lot of stone even going back to the uh pre-dynastic cultures yes but what we see is that they're, you know, again, very imprecise and plainly hand-worked. If you show, I, you know, if I walked into a car park and I said there are 10,000 cars in here and I, and I just show you the Ferrari, you're going to think, well, it's, there are 10,000 Ferraris in the car park. No, it, that's, that's an exception. The rest of them are Corollas and what have you in there. So, yes, that's the... It's just... This paints of you know forty thousand granite and diorite precision vases. It's just it's not true, not true at all. And it paints this bit. Well, if these, oh, it's, imagine how hard it would be to make a precision vase. The only precision vases presented have no provenance at all. These are the ones. 
the ones that we can establish to be from an actual ancient tomb, not not those that uh, um, could have been. You know, the nineteen thirties there was a big industry in fakes, and people you know maybe you know who work with C and C machines and uh, and have a known history of faking uh, experiments might just be inclined to use the machinery that they're, and tooling that, they're, that is a freely available or fr- is available to them to get a, you know, even a, whether it's an original, most likely a forgery, and just to grind it up, polish it up, just to get it super thin and, and meet these standards in there. But that'll be, <clears throat> pardon me, that'll be to come. I'll link a few videos in the description. There was once released by Night Scarab on this beautiful piece of work. And uh, World of Antiquity also did an examination of this. But when it, this is important because this is pro- if these ones can be measured, well, again, you don't even sort of have to really for a lot of them because it's just even just from across the room you can spot it. But yeah, it is a myth of the 40,000 vases and that's sort of used while well, one so hard. So making 40,000 just in Saqqara, this, well, this may must have had advanced machinery uh, you know a tale of two industries as it's as it's told well you build up a false standard and then you can sell this but uh these are just all these little bits and pieces that they add on to add incredulity and it's, it's a house of cards and you know details do matter provenance does matter and having a good reputation of not faking experiments and not being, not censoring things, and not getting caught just telling bold face, bold faced lies, that's a very important thing as well. So, uh, with that, links in the description. Um, and again, if you hear these forty thousand vases, uh, uh, you know, thirty nine thousand five hundred alabaster shallow bowls and dishes which as i've shown with some uh, recent experiments can be pumped out in no time at all with that sgd uh, have a good one